So I, I think uh, last year Joe Judge said something like you would you would chew off your own foot to get back out on the field or something like that. So uh, how how hard was it being sidelined for the basically the entire season? Yeah, you know that was uh, that was my first inj injury ever in my career, so it was kind of a different you know uh, mental standpoint. But I just I love I love to practice. I love to get better, and obviously uh, not being able to be out there with the guys. I was trying to do everything I could to get out there. So. What does it mean not to be in a red jersey? Because almost every guy who was hurt last year is still in the like cautious red jersey phase. You're not. Like, I was itching to get it off. Man. You know, it was I was itching to get it off because I didn't even want the you know the the persona, I guess. Of, I didn't want to be in that jersey, and uh, I did everything I could to get out of it. And uh, you know, the trade. Did you try to hand one to you, and you said no. Um, I. <laughs> but uh, the training staff did everything they could to get me back back out here and everything. So I'm really grateful for the, everyone in this building and everyone who helped me get me back. So yeah. Last year, you obviously got hurt during training camp and you were trying yeah. to play through it. Like, how, how, like, were you with a lot of pain in that week one game when you were playing? Like, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, but it was, uh, yeah, I was, I was did, a lot of pain. Did it like, after, was it after that point where you realized you couldn't go after? Yeah, at halftime I went in and I called it quits. So, well, I didn't call it quits, but I said like, that's, that's enough. For a guy to himself on toughness yeah. probably pushed it beyond where a, a tough guy would have taken it, right? I mean, he... uh, you know, I, it was more the fact that I wanted to be out there for my team. You know, I wanted to be out there and playing. I wanted, I did everything I could to get out there. Uh, I didn't really think about, you know, I got to tough through this. I was just like, you know, my teammates need me, and I love this game so much. I was going to do everything I could to get on that field. So. I know it's easy to ask now, but would you have done anything differently? No. How it happened. No regrets, man. You know, it's uh, it's a new year, and look at me. I'm, I'm here now, and uh, I'm healthy, and I'm ready to roll. So you, you come back now, and it's a new look. You have a completely new look off in the blind room, new yeah. look the blind coach. Like, what, what's it like coming back to this room with like so many new faces? Yeah, it's it's awesome. You know, it's uh, it's we got a great group of guys. You guys just talked to Glow. He's a great dude. Uh, we got John Feliciano, a great guy. Uh, the rookies all coming in. They're great dudes, man. They're learning. They're like sponges right now, and it's really cool to see. Uh, obviously, learning a new scheme is fun, and you know it's stressful at the same time because you got to learn all new stuff and you got to learn uh, new verbiage and all that kind of stuff. But it's uh, it's kind of a cool standpoint of getting to getting my feet under me again and uh, you know starting from scratch basically. So yeah. With the whole year of rehab, did you reconfigure your body a little bit? No, I've always been. You know, I probably leaned out a little more. I came in, I was a little heavier, and then I leaned out and leaned out and. I actually uh, bought a, I, I made a home gym this off season when I was on IR and everything. So that's kind of my, been my gig this off season. I, I have my own gym, so I don't really have to leave my house. So I'm kind of a workout junkie. That's the thing that I really like to do. So, you know, I'm about three, five, 305 to 310 right now. And what were you as a rookie? Uh, I was 313, but bad weight, you know, just bad weight. Dable and uh, Bobby Johnson both said like, when they were in Buffalo, yeah. they liked you. I'm wondering if you remember anything about conversations with them when they were there before, yeah. before and did you think Buffalo was going to draft you like yeah. that year? Yeah, I had a, an official meeting at the Combine with the Buffalo staff, with uh, Dave's and Bobby Johnson, and you know, I got the normal you know, talk and everything like that, but it was after that I uh, had constant communication with, uh, <laughs> I had constant communication with Bobby uh, through the draft process, even leading up to the draft, I thought they were going to take me, you know, but I, you know, I got the best of both worlds. I'm here at the best organization ever, and I'm with this new coaching staff, so yeah. Did you knock off any rust when you came out here? You know, the first few days, you know, it's just getting, I haven't really done football movements because I've been rehabbing so hard. I'm getting the knee right. But uh, so when I first got out here, it was the, it was, um, yeah, I guess I was shaking a little rust off. And it's just the, the stuff like cadences. I got to get used to hearing the quarterback's cadence again. I got to get used to playing next to new guys and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. what, was, what was Kayvon Thibodeau like as a freshman at Oregon? He was, uh, you know, he's obviously the number one prospect in high school coming out. And uh, he was a great athlete. When he walked in, you could tell, like, man, that's, that's a football player right there, you know. And um, he, was a, he was a good dude. He's a good, good locker room guy. Um, and it, we, we had a lot of battles his rookie year. But I think it was his sophomore year where he really stood out most. We had like a, I think it was the Pac-12 championship game against Utah my senior year. He had like a strip sack, he had a pump block, and it, yeah, you know, it was a bunch of stuff. So sophomore year, I think, is when he really shined. What did you think, I mean, leading up to the draft, there were knocks on him about guy who takes plays off, guy who doesn't love football. I don't know if you heard any of that. Yeah. What did you think of that, knowing that you knew that? I, I, you know, I'd never even paid attention to that because I know the kind of player he was. He was phenomenal. And I know, I know in practice he was going all out every single play. And uh, obviously they asked me, because I'm from Oregon, what I thought about him. I told him straight up, like, he's a guy. He's a real dude. And he's a real good player. And effort's nothing I would ever question with him.
the film what did you see and was it was it not what they saw well I mean that's like two years from now into two years ago now um, I, I listened to what our my coach at the time was telling me I really don't you know I, I don't have a Twitter I don't have any of that kind of stuff so I don't listen to that kind of stuff I'm kind of old school much respect to PFF you know but I, I listen to what my coaches tell me are you uh, getting used to Frenchie as the nickname or I've heard it all I've, I've had a lot of nicknames it's a new one for me Probably not the worst one. Right? It's not the worst one. <laughs> what about the nickname of your center? That's not. Uh, oh, dirtbag. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a term of endearment. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 they, you know, two years ago when you were playing, they talked about you as a nasty. Yeah. You know, they didn't call you dirtbag, but it had yeah. dirtbag connotations. I yeah, guess. that's that's I think that's what Bobby was getting at with that. You know, I don't want to speak for him, but yeah, I, I, he he prides himself as a tough physical player. John John does. And uh, I think that just kind of fits it. And do you like that? Do you like when people talk about you and they say, oh, he's got a nasty disposition and all that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, I think, I think that uh, fits the profile, the mold of what you know offensive linemen should be. You know, we were tone setters. In this offense, offensive linemen were tone setters, and that's that's the way we should play, and uh, that's the way we're coached. Well, While we're at it, what's the nicknames of the rest of the, uh, the, end, of the bookends? Um... I don't think I don't think anyone else really has a nickname. Ben Bredesen's Bob. That's his nickname. Uh, <laughs> it's like the Bob from uh, There's a Midwest Burger Stand. Yeah. We call him Burly Bob. I don't know, but uh, I'm from West I'm from West Coast. But um, Big Ev, man, he, he's just a massive dude. I don't, he hasn't got a nickname. He's just Big Ev. At Andrew, it's my guy. So yeah. Shane, how much do you guys talk about as a line? For years, the offensive line has been a weakness, yeah. and. How much do you talk about taking charge and turning that around and being the people responsible for not being that way? Yeah, this uh, this organization we've had we've had good offensive lines in the past. We've had you know with Deal, you know you had Richie, you had O'Hara, you had all these guys that we as offensive linemen now in the past couple of years we've felt we need to like live up to those standards from those guys and continue to play the way that they left it. You know, so we have a great deal of respect for them. We have a great deal of pressure, not, you know, I wouldn't say pressure, but we need to hold ourselves to a standard of that kind of offensive line play when they were winning the Super Bowls. And because they're around in the building and we, we obviously, we talked to them. You know, I, I know I talked to Richie and I talked to, I talked to Sean O'Hare around the building and stuff. And we have, uh, we need to hold ourselves to a standard of the way that they play because that's the way it should. Thanks, Shane. Uh, Maddie, can I just ask about Gates? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What have, you probably spent a lot of time in the yeah. training room with Gates. Yeah. What have you seen him going through? What has he showed you? What have you learned about your game? <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of perseverance, man. I mean, the thing that he went through, and the you know, you see him out here playing around. You see him. That's the energy, man. He he had a really devastating injury, and I, I love to see him the way he's worked so far. But you know, it's it's uh, he's, he's going at his pace, man, and it's uh, it's been cool to see him develop from that. It's my guy.